Most cooperative games seem to have the element of a danger that you're trying to avert, uh, like a pandemic, of course, that's a famous one, but in general you're trying to stop an enemy or something like that. Uh, from time to time we have cooperative Euro games, and Switch and Signal is precisely one such game. It has a very strong Euro game feel, including the old Euro gamey topic of uh, trains, but at the same time it is fully cooperative. It is marketed that as for two to four players, and I think that that's uh, mislabeling there because it should be one to four. This is definitely a 100% solitaire friendly game. Matter of fact, I played it with a friend, so two players and also solitaire, and there's basically no difference whatsoever. If anything, since as you will see, there isn't really any interaction between players when it's not your turn, there is, I believe, possibly a danger of alpha player element of quarterbacking at higher numbers of players, so one to two players seem to be good, at least that's the way I played it, and that's also, that is also the way I enjoyed it. You know, if you try with higher numbers, then let me know what you feel. The point is that we are going to run trains that are not controlled by the players, they're simply labeled by the color, there are slower trains which are gray, average speed trains which are brown, and then the fastest trains are black. They're gonna appear in these locations around the board here, as you can see they're numbered with numbers between 2 and 12, so you know that they will be uh, summoned by a roll of the die that will tell you where the train appears, oh 12, which of course is not very likely, so most trains will appear in the range between 6, 7 and 8, statistically speaking. You can also, if you get bored uh, of what we're using the same board, you can place these tokens here, so changing the, uh, the likeliness of trains appearing in a location rather than another. So these trains will appear on the board, the players will play action cards to control different things that happen on the board, and ultimately what you're trying to do is you're gonna try to have your train pick up goods, in these cities, there are cities that have goods, blue, white, red, and yellow, and you're trying to have the trains deliver the goods here in the sports city of Marseille. If you're able to do so before this deck of departure cards runs out, then you win the game. If you fail to do so, then you lose the game. The board also has another side, and on the other side there's a different map that represents the North American continent, and this time you're gonna try to deliver goods to two port cities, one on the east, on the west coast, and one on the east coast. The general idea remains the same, uh, vastly the same game, with different unique effects, we'll see what those are, but again, generally speaking, the same idea, with different maps, so with different challenges there. The biggest being that you have two port cities, instead of one. So, uh, the map, as you can see, it has connections, uh, it has areas where you need a green with traffic lights, and basically trains will be able to run through a connection if it has a green token, representing again a green uh, traffic light, they cannot go through these connections. And so, for example, if you want the train to enter Nuremberg from there and to leave Nuremberg from another location, then you will need to place the token there. So now the token, that train can move that way. Similarly, for these switches here, you have switches with four circle spaces and switches with three of those. And simply to, in order to run, the train needs to go through circles that are not covered by black wooden tokens, just like so. And that would be for a train that goes through a connection with, with four, when there is a connection with three. Well, it's the same principle. You can only move through the ones that are open and not covered by those connections. So as you can imagine already from just seeing this, uh, a lot of the game will be playing game effects here represented by cards that will allow you to manipulate the board, to move around those green tokens and those black tokens to open switches and then to create green lights. You will also, once you are in a location with a, with a station, 
that still have those goods represented by cubes, you can spend a card to load a train like I just did there. But more in detail, at the beginning of a turn, the active player will draw a card from this deck. This is the departure deck. The first card is always this one, which is basically set up. It instructs us to place a black train, a brown train, and a gray train. I have to see on some of these cards, uh, it's obvious right now which one is the black and which one is the gray. Uh, sometimes when you only see one on a card, you have to look twice, which is not ideal. When you need to add a new train, again, you simply roll the dice and you add the corresponding train, well, the corresponding train, you know, the corresponding color to the corresponding location. So we place that one there. Now we need to place a brown train and we place it in location number six because that's what I rolled. And then we place a gray train in station four. That's it. And then the active player takes their turn, we'll see what that means, and then the next player goes and they also start their turn by drawing a departure card. This card tells us that we need to add a train of any color that we want. Suppose we decide to choose brown and we place it again the way that we did. And suppose that we just rolled a five, so we place that on location number five up there. And then the card tells us that we need to run all of our gray trains. To run a train, as instructed by a card, you roll a die of the corresponding color. Again, gray is the slowest, the brown is faster, and the black is fastest, as you can simply see by the breakdown of the numbers. This is mainly one and two, with a single three, brown goes to four, and the black goes to five. This is very important because when the trains run, you don't get to choose how far they go. The dice tells you and they have to go as, fa as far as possible as indicated there. Again, with the gray train, not a problem. So when we run a train, in that case, that's all we do. If we had other uh, gray trains on the board, suppose that there is one right here, then we roll a die for that one also. And we also move that as far as it can go. Um, suppose that a train cannot move its full movement allowance. Suppose that I was supposed to move that brown train there by three, one, two, and then it hits that connection there, which is closed. For each space that I cannot move, like in that case, one, two, and then I have a third space I cannot move to, I take a token from this pile and I remove it. That's important. That's how you pay for penalties for uh, things, uh, for moves that you, you cannot complete, which can come again from encountering that space, uh, for getting to a red light and not being able to, uh, to move there. Uh, if you are encountering other trains along the way, say this train is moving there, one, and then you can go through that connection, but there's another train there, then uh, too bad. There are movements, again, that you cannot complete. All of those are paid for this way. The trains have to go as far as they can, as dictated by the dice. So you're kind of like managing <laughs> trains, but of course managing uh, risk, managing danger. Oh my gosh, what if that brown train is activating next time? Do we have the connections where they can go? Or <clears throat> can I accept the the kind of penalty. So that's how you uh, resolve the departure cards so that uh, again will dictate which trains are added to the board and or which trains must be moved. In this case you choose two different kinds of trains and the order in which they go. Maybe activate gray and black or black and brown or brown and gray whatever the case. So again, it's always a mix of moving trains. This is the black train. Again, I have to look twice because a secondary thing it may be gray. Adding trains, moving trains, and so on and so forth. This deck <coughs> also is your timer. If the deck runs out and you still have not delivered all of the goods to the port city of Marseille or to two different port cities on the other side of the board, then you lose the game. That's how you lose the game if you don't deliver the goods by the time this deck runs out. Remember these tokens? 
that you remove from that stack every time you have a penalty. When the stack runs out, you take a card from this deck and is discarded out of the game and then you reset the stack and next time again it runs out because of penalties you lose another card. So not running your trains efficiently, not running them as fast as dictated by card effects and by die rolls forces you to shorten your, your fuse, basically, your timer. So, player's turn, the player draws a card, resolves those effects, ooh, lots going on here. Then, finally, hoo -hoo, the player gets to activate, to spend actions. The, the game is card driven, uh, each player receives each turn five of these cards and there are three types of, of cards and the player can play their hand of five cards in any order. Usually you end up spending all or most of them. You can also save them from turn to turn and you can save them then next turn you'll get five more cards and you can have up to ten. So yes, you, you, have, you can strategize if you don't need a card right away. This card, you simply choose a train of any color when you play it and you move it following the usual rules of, um, of rolling a die for the train that you want to move. Suppose I want to move that train and this is the situation right now, then I roll the black die because I decided to move that black train and that was the situation I described, so one, two, three, four. It's really satisfying to move these trains once you have placed all the right connections. Oh no, that train is gonna go that. I don't want it to go that way. So now I'm gonna play another card. When I play this kind of card, then I take, then I can move all of the markers in an intersection and suppose that that is the situation right now. When I play this card, then I can take a traffic light and move it from a location on the board to another location on the board, so now the train can run through. It's important, each city must always have at least a traffic light, you cannot seal a city that way. But suppose that that was the case. And then I play another movement card, because I really like to move that train there again after it worked so hard to place all the things in place. One, two, three, four, five. I'm sending it not in the best possible way, but it was fun to see it run. From here, probably we'll wanna change connections so the final this train can get there. When it's approaching, I finally spend that card. And hooray! When a train that has some cargo reaches the port city, it delivers the cargo and it goes back to the to the supply from which it can be deployed later. So, you have three kind of cards, again, moving a train, moving a traffic light, moving the black tokens in an intersection. You discard a card when a train is in a station, you discard a card to load a cargo cube, you can also discard any two cards, ignoring the effect uh, to have a wild effect. So you discard any two cards to trigger any of those effects that I mentioned earlier. Moving a train, moving a traffic light, uh, moving connections within a switch. You can also use the special actions here. The, the, the team working together can choose when to use them, but each action is once per game, so once you use it, you cover it like that. And can be really good stuff like re-rolling a die, going through green, through um, through red lights as if they had green light tokens on it, or ignoring the movement of a kind of train from a departure card. And yeah, the board again it has different geography and also has different uh, uh, unique effects, and that is really the only different difference in the rules. So here's the idea, the trains appear on the board, they must run when the cars dictate, dictate the card that dictates that they must run, otherwise you get penalties, move the trains when mandated, spend actions to manipulate the connections on the board and the traffic lights, and to move the trains even more, Try to deliver those goods without taking too many penalties, without taking too long. If you can deliver all goods to the port city or port cities on the other side of the board, you win the game. If you take too long, you lose the game. 
this is good. This is good. In a nutshell, I enjoyed playing this game. It is a refreshing take, of course, on Euro games and also on train games. Some of those can be so cutthroat. 18xx, I'm looking at you. Those games are evil. Uh, so it's nice to see a game where you're running trains and you're actually are trying to work together with other people. You like each other. So that's awesome. Uh, I, I just like the general feel, the general flow. There's a strong puzzle element. And again, for a Euro game, there is uh, a lot more theme than a lot of games out there. The theme doesn't feel pasted on at all. You feel that, that this game really would not work with a different theme. If you are re-theming it, then it just doesn't make any sense. So there is an unusually high connection between topic and mechanics here. And the mechanics, again, they have a puzzle feel to them and that's perfectly fine. And an, an interesting element of, of managing risk, of budgeting uh, risk. Because you really cannot possibly have, or in most cases, you cannot possibly have all trains traveling safely. And if you do, that's usually a problem because it means that you have only few trains on the board and so you're, you, you have sent a train to a city and you would deliver the good, um, which seems to be great. Uh, now you only have a couple of trains on the board, but that means it's taking you too long and you won't be able to deliver all the goods. So really you have to strike that balance uh, in which you want to have enough trains on the board that they are delivering enough stuff fast enough, and so that when you have an activation card that comes from the departure deck, you're activating a number of trains, but of course that may, means that you're more at risk of having some of them bumping into each other, bumping into red lights, and so on and so forth. So, if you're gonna have, if you're going to be able to deliver the goods in time to win, you will have to take some penalties. You will have to run a slightly higher amount of trains than you like to. You have to be comfortable with that amount of risk that you're taking. Some train will be facing a dead connection and you know that you will take a penalty for that. And so you have to decide when it is and where it is and which trains are going to face it. Most likely you want to uh, risk a penalty with a great train because their maximum uh, movement is three. So they will take tops a penalty of three if they're really sitting in front of a dead connection when they have to activate. With a black train that is faster, that's more problematic. So it's really interesting how you have a Eurogame feel here, but you have an amount of, of danger, so to speak, of risk that you have to decide. And yet at the same time, no single penalty will lose you the game. Uh, so it really is in the aggregate. So you have, a, yes, a lot of randomness coming from the die rolls, yet randomness coming from the from the cards, but it's the kind of randomness that I find impartial, which is a lot of randomness over a long period of time, each really only uh, mattering in, in small increments. So it's still about the aggregate, it's still about the playing well or playing pool in, in the long term as opposed to, oh, that one decision cost us the game. I see how that may happen, but it doesn't seem to be super significant. So I like the puzzle feel, I, I like the, the how luck impacts the game, but not in a way that replaces good planning and strategy. And good planning and strategy really are the heart of the game. Um, which in some groups may even backfire in a sense that the game may be prone to alpha player problem, to quarterbacking. Uh, there is no secret information. Uh, the game is unclear whether you should um, you should show your cards to the opponent, but that's really relevant. Even in those games where you know, oh, you cannot show the cards so that everybody can um, can have their saying. I can totally see how though you have perfect information on the board and there are just some configurations that may be better than others and I can 100% uh, see uh, a more experienced player, a more confident player ending up managing the decisions for the players. Yeah, you can show the cards, yeah, but we need to do that. Do you have a, a switch? Do you have a green light? Do you have this? Do you have that? I don't think there is really any way of preventing the alpha player problem other than players policing their their behavior other than etiquette and we know that the problem exists because some players can do that some players may not you know, realize they are doing it i haven't caught myself uh, uh 
try not to tell my friend things that I wanted to tell him. So, um, that's it. That's You have to play with, you have to know yourself and your players, and you know that this game, if you know you have a player that is prone to that problem, I don't think this game is going to work, because there's no fail-safe within the design against quarterbacking. Production overall is pretty good, with the exception, again, I like more more contrast on those cards. But overall, cardboard and wood, it's it's a functional, it's a functional production, meaning the game is functional, the components are functional, and also they're pleasant to look at, they're pleasant to touch and manipulate. So with the exception of that minor thing about the departure cards, so it's really good production. So what we have here in sum, it's a fun, interesting, uh, family-friendly uh, relaxed in terms of not you know contentious but but interesting uh, and challenging puzzle that you have here so again with a strong uh, challenge with a strong puzzle element uh, don't play it with the alpha player or if you're the alpha player and you know it'll entertain you for a number of, of reruns not maybe an infinite number and this is my assessments for switch and signal